Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Hunter Gatherer channel. And today is Friday, the 17th, I believe. It's 7:20, and I'm getting ready to head after some whitetail deer and hopefully track down a nice buck. Finally got some snow. It's muzzleloader season, and uh, I got to brush the Jeep off. We're gonna go see if we can find some fresh tracks. And uh, we'll talk about it when we get up on the hill. So I'm gonna get this thing clean and then we're gonna go. So any of you uh, southern hunters, it's a snow brush. I know, you don't need one. You probably have bought a couple in your lifetime, but maybe. Anyhow, snow. That's what I've been waiting for, right? I'm excited. This stuff, thankfully, it's uh, for, for cleaning the vehicle. It was all just a powdery, dusty snow. Um, no ice on the windshield. It's good and bad. It's good for some snow cover. It's good to see where you know deer activity is gonna be. The bad thing about this snow is uh, it's not too deep. It's a little deeper than you really need, but it's not too deep. But, but the other thing about it is that it is powdery. Um, powdery snow, you don't get any like um, hoof definition. It's a little harder to judge size of a track and it's harder to judge um, the freshness of a track. Guys from down south, you might not have seen, you, I mean, not that everybody in down south hasn't seen snow, um, but you get it just once in a while. We lived in North Carolina and we we'd get snow maybe once a year, not every year. And sometimes we got it like twice, they shut everything down. And anyway, um, the snow, there's snow that you can make a snowball with and a snowman with, it's nice packing snow. And this stuff is just like flour, um, where you can't make a snowball to save your life. Um, you're looking really great tracking snow is the nice wet, packing snow that you can make a snowball with um, you know right in the between like 28 and 32 33 degrees you get snow like that um, this snow came at like 18 degrees um, and I'm not like a, a meteorologist to tell you exactly why that snow at 18 degrees doesn't come down wet but that's just the way it is I think it's something to do with humidity or something to do with whatever so but the colder it is the, the, the fluffier the snow is and it just makes for a hard a harder tracking uh, job but it, it's definitely better than no snow there's good good things about it being a powdery snow though due to the fact that I wasn't able to hunt yesterday if this was the, um, the the packing snow, the the wet snow, last night it got down to like 15. And if this was the the wet snow, like if it was a 30 degree day um, on Wednesday when it snowed, and then yesterday it got into the teens, you'd get an ice layer on the top, and it would crunch, crunch, crunch every step, like you're breaking glass, and. Uh, You'd never sneak up on anything. Now this stuff was powdery. It stayed cold yesterday. I think the I think it got it like 22 yesterday or something like that. So this stuff stayed powdery. And uh, if you remember correctly, um, Wednesday I was hunting in the morning and it was super loud. Um, the leaves were all um, wet and had frozen, and it was just crunch, crunch, crunch. Now we've got. Well, I mean, we had about, I think we got about 10 inches yesterday, or maybe eight, but it's kind of condensed down to about five or six, but it is pillow quiet. It's like, it's gonna be like walking on, uh, on goose down. So it's gonna allow me to get up there and stay quiet and, uh, and get into some tracks. 
it's just I, I feel like today is the day today's the day let's just think about in a little while we're gonna see a deer down that's what I feel so no pressure and uh, we'll just get up there and, and start get the wind right and find some tracks Super quiet. I'll show you something kind of cool. That's a bunch of red sumac seeds from this uh, sumac tree right up here. You can see the birds are eating seeds out of there. It's pretty neat how even in this big heavy snow, there's food for, for the birds. I don't know if you can hear how quiet the snow is, but man, it's awesome. It's just amazing compared to how loud it's been coming up through here. It's a game changer. I'm going with, this track is from yesterday. I'll show you why. If you look down in the hoof, you see there's like dusting on the top of the track. Looks like there's some sugar sprinkled on it. So that's going to be an older, an older track from like last night. This is pretty, some fairly deep snow for the deer. With the temperatures, I think it's supposed to get down to like 10 degrees tonight. They may go to a field tonight. A field that had taller, like soybean. I don't have anything like that. So another thing about snow, even though it doesn't look that that bad you're having to pick your legs up a lot higher for one two even though it's not that much it puts some extra weight on your boots three you do not have as much traction as you thought so every time you're going to pick up your foot if you're pushing down on the other one your foot is sliding this makes makes your muscles work a lot harder i'm sure there's a few other things that make it a little bit more difficult to hunt, but it's pros outweigh its cons. You just want to wear good boots that you're not going to get wet in. Today I'm going pants tucked in because the snow is only a little bit over my ankle. And I don't want my pants getting soaked and getting heavy. But if it's going to be up over your boots, you got to keep them untucked. Your pants get soaked and heavy. If it's down below ankle deep, I'll keep my pants outside of my boots because they're not comfortable that way. I feel like it's going this way. It's hard to see it right now. Can you guys see it? I don't see it. I think it's because the white blends into the white. There it goes. Right up the hill. Oh, that's not a track. You can see that, I don't know if you can see it, but it's pretty small there. What I was following is this one here, a lot bigger deer. And you can see, like, one track might take you to more tracks. I'm pretty sure this is just a big doe. From everything I've seen from the sign, it looks like a big doe. And here's another deer running down through, and that, I think, was the other deer that I 
first I saw two deer. I saw the back of one, and then when I looked up, I saw a head facing me. I think that bigger one took off running. It's all right. I'm gonna find more deer today. Kind of stood here and hung out for a little while ate on these bushes. See all these tips that are bit off. She's not in a big yank. She's just walking, just strolling through the woods. You can see where another deer milled through. Just kind of meandering through the, the gully. Hmm. I don't think these are any fresher than these ones. Maybe a little bit. I'm not 100% sure when the battery died on the GoPro, but I'm just tracking up through. I've been following some uh, some tracks in the snow. They're all pretty old. Like I said, there's a whole day yesterday that um, deer were walking around in the snow and I wasn't up here. Um, I found a couple of different spots where doe had peed. One was uh, pretty yellow. The other one was like a brownish, uh, reddish color. You might think it's gross, but I, I knelt in it and kind of rubbed that snow around on both of my knees. I crossed a bunch of tracks on the way up here. Deer tracks. And I get up to the top and I see this. This is where somebody walked through last night. I was kind of thinking I was going somewhere where people hadn't been yet. It was not the case. I'm going to wish I shot that little one, I think. I should have probably just followed them. But they were the freshest tracks. Here's that set of tracks. It's probably Bradley. So I think I want to stay kind of down low. You can see all these tracks right here. I'm just kind of staying right along this edge. And you might even catch something walking down through the creek. But I'm going to try to not slide all the way down the hill. This is what we're looking for, right here. But it's it's older. They ate and then they bedded right there. The thing is, these deer are a little bit easier to see because of the brown and they're moving in the white. But I gotta tell you, I'm a lot easier to see too. Look at there's a bed right there. It's a pretty good size one. I'm a lot easier to see too, so it's not like got a super advantage or anything. Found this older set of doe tracks. And you're like, how do you know it's a doe track? You see this? See that? She's dripping blood. She's not in, in heat right now, but she's just finished it. That's super steep right there. I'm gonna cut up over on this side. But we got some water trickling. I'm running under the ice. So pretty down here. That doe came right up through here. She just kept on going up. This is the area that Jeremy and Landon shot at those 15 doe, or J Jeremy shot. We saw all of them. Um, I crossed these sets of tracks once, and then I crossed them again coming back. There's like six or eight deer that did go up through and back down at some time. And this set of tracks, I know they're older, but this set feels like a buck, and I'm just going to kind of follow him and see if he takes me to an area that maybe he's coming back through again. Now there's a couple reasons why I think feel like this is a buck, and probably not a huge buck, but a buck anyways. One is the size of the track. Two, he's traveling alone. Three, he's got an okay stride, but not huge. Four, he's dragging his hoofs, which I won't say is a 100% guarantee that it's a buck when they do that, 
but I've seen more buck do it than doe. And the way he's walking, he's just going to a spot. Please be hit. Please be hit. Please be hit. Please be hit. I've had two encounters with this buck since archery season. He's a beautiful tall nine point. He came in at 60 yards during archery and he wouldn't commit to come the rest of the distance. I also saw him one other time run in front of me as I was headed out of the woods to go to lunch. What a beautiful animal and I would have loved to have harvested him and closed this chapter but I know he's still up there and it gives me something to chase next year. Please be hit. It's hit him, boys. Oh, come on, be hit. I think I totally missed him. Oh, right over his back, I know it. Oh, I'm feeling like I missed him. Son of a gun. Oh, I should have waited on the shot. All right, let's reload, because now I got tracks. Let's just see. Sometimes, oh, oh gracious. Jason, oh, jeepers. No hair up there, no blood that I can see right over him. here because I can catch this guy. I can catch him. All right, let's get loaded. Let's get loaded. That was a good buck. I don't think it was him, but it was a nice one. And that's right what I was planning. I did everything. Man, my execution is sucking this year. Okay, guys, that's how, that's how you do it. I was so close to him. I shot right over his back. I should, his, I only had this much back showing. I could have aimed into the snow. I just want to chuck my GoPro. I even turned it on. <laughs> okay. All right, Lord, thank you so much. You showed me that the stuff works. You showed me how to do it. You should let me get into them. You gave me everything and I blew the execution. Okay. Hey, everybody. <sighs> the game's on. We got fresh tracks and we've got a nice buck. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm cleaning this thing. You might think, what are you, crazy? It's gonna give him a second to calm down a little bit. And it's gonna make sure that my next shot is just as accurate as the first, even though the first wasn't that accurate. It was because it hit a little high. I was so close to him and it's a little high at whatever. I can't believe I missed him. Man, that's so frustrating. Joy sent me a text this morning and said, I love you, baby. I hope you get a deer, shoot straight. And I said, I always shoot straight, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Straight into the ground, right over his back. All right, that's clear. You can see daylight through it. Okay, man. All right, cleaning patch. Yep. Okay, this guy, he's gonna take me all over the place. I know it. So I was on those tracks, those what I figured was buck tracks, and they went right up into the field up top. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going all the way up there. I know they're old. I figured that maybe he uh, ate up there and came down embedded. Sure enough. All right, I'm gonna clean this muzzle loader, and then I'm gonna get back on the hunt. You don't need to watch this. I showed you this the other day. Hey everybody, frustration level is high. So many times did I rush a shot, I think, because I think this is all I got. He was bedded. I could have stayed there for probably 15 minutes. Maybe he wouldn't have moved. Maybe he would have got up and given me a good shot. And I thought, I'm gonna shoot him in his bed. Oh 
Man, my eyes are watering. Looks like I'm about to cry. I might be. I don't know. I'm on these tracks and they are going. If you saw the day that it had snowed and I bumped that one out of its bed, he's running pretty much the same area. Rather right down into the big gully and probably right up on the other side. It's super quiet. It's got the wind currently to my favor. He's running into the wind. Doesn't mean he's going to stay that way. I've got to keep my eyes peeled. I don't know if you guys saw it in the GoPro or not. I got it cleaned and reloaded, so I'm ready for the next shot. I'm just praying. I've been praying since I've been cleaning the muzzle loader. Lord, let me get a shot at this buck. He's given me opportunity after opportunity on it. At least put me in the, you know, the right mindset. I'm not saying like he directed every single step or that he didn't, but he he's given me this brain. He's taught me. He's allowed me to learn stuff. And I was right where I was supposed to be. There's absolutely no sign of any hit. No blood. No, no hair. Super clean mess. We're about to drop down in the first spot. And uh, I need to focus here. So you guys are going in my pocket. Please, Lord, help me catch this guy. tracks in here and I have currently I'm pretty sure lost his there's deer tracks running everywhere there's coyote tracks running everywhere just had a coyote blow past me I hope you guys learned something from that stupid mistake that deer was bedded right there I could have just sat there for an hour waiting for him to stand up. I would have had a full broadside shot. I've shot many deer in their beds, but not that one. Another thing I could have done is that snow is a good six or eight inches deep. I could have put it down to where it was shooting through the snow and it would have given me an eight or ten inch shot on his body. But the smartest thing would have been to just wait. I didn't even think I could see. I didn't see antlers. I saw that's a big deer by itself. Probably a buck. But I have two doe tags and I'm trying to fill a doe tag too. So I just went for it. I should have been patient. So that's what I learned. I, I, this is a learning year with this uh, camera thing. I had the presence of mind to stop. I crouched down. And I went up and turned the GoPro on. So I did my part of trying to get it on film. <sighs> Alright. I have to get the pity party over with, you know. It's not so much like sad or upset that like I missed a deer. It's just mad at myself for doing stupid stuff. It's almost like I've turned into a rookie hunter all over again with these cameras or something. Anyways, whatever. Enough excuses. Should have done the right thing. Just mad. Throw everything out the window and like, ah, shoot the deer. <laughs> Gotta get one on film. Ugh. Oh well. What I'm doing is I'm doing like a big circle on top of this knob and this set of tracks that I just run into. Looks like it could be him. In this gully is pretty steep. Just trying to find a spot to cross. I found all these deer tracks going across, so I figure this is the spot. So I'm gonna have to slide down this hill and kind of ski in motion. Ooh. Yeah. And up the other side. I had found that buck track again, and he went up and onto some private. I had to stop trailing. 
gonna bend there, gonna bend there, gonna bend there. Nothing fresh. Another bend there. And a good side bend there. I said in a previous video, I'll be back for these. Found it. It's those plastic gloves that somebody left up here. I didn't want to forget them. We got a dead battery. I'm getting some miles in today for sure. Man, I can feel it. Traffic is snowed on. Ah. Okay. I'm following these tracks. I think they're from yesterday. But you can see he's not a big, huge buck. But he stopped at a tree down there and rubbed it. You can see his face goes down in here. You can see his antler. Right there. And maybe right there. Alright everyone. I came back to the scene of the, the crime here. And just wanted to give you a little picture of what was going on. I don't know if you saw a whole lot. Um, but I'm going to show you. So this is the area. Pretty high stem count. The field is about 400 yards, maybe, uphill. It's uh, kind of kind of thick right here, but if you look over here, it's even thicker. Got all these tree tops, right? Here's the bed. He was bedded with his head up here and his back was facing this direction he was so he could look down and the wind in the morning would have been blowing down hill but it just switched i came down from over that way there's a looks like an oak over there um and i had come down through that way it's about 25 30 yards and i saw his his head sticking out from behind the trees right here and uh and I could see his back, and I could just see his back about this high above the snow. See how much more room I had? The problem is, is there was that tree right there that I was trying to not hit. And uh, I thought I hit right there, because all them, those leaves. When I shot, he kind of jumped up and then took off right down the bank. An extra shot would have been great. But, like I said, he was there. I could have just waited for him to stand up at some point. I was right up there, and uh, I was pretty hidden. So, but he had all this thick stuff down below here. And I just came back down and look, looking, thinking maybe that's where I hit. But then I looked again, and I saw a little bit of yellow over here by this tree. So I went over there to inspect. And you can see I hit the tree right on the edge there. So I want to come back over here and look from where I hit that tree and up through the snow you can see there's a little trough where my bullet went down through and hit the tree you see so I'm thinking that that's kind of where the bullet went down through the snow see it from here yeah, pretty much right through there and I was aiming right here at his at his back and it just missed over top of him that's the area he was hanging nice and thick it's got an escape in any direction there's a road that comes right along here um, and he could bust through here a couple times. I don't know. That's how he came in. If you see his tracks right there, he came from above. It's a big track. So we'll just come over here and see what he... I'm guessing he came down from the field. Oh, I just want to see what his track looks like when he's just walking. Instead of running. So 
I'm going to jack up here. I left my muzzle loader down there. He has a pretty good, not a huge stride, but he's not really going for it right here or whatever. You know, he's just kind of trying to figure out where do I want to lay down today and just relax and wait for a time to go eat again. So, he came down through here and hopped up over this and bedded right there. That's how that went down. Um, I think the muzzle loader was hitting about this high at 50 and, and 100. And uh, I should have just, I should have aimed lower or I should have waited. That's, that's pretty much my story. Sometimes you get one chance a season. I had a pretty good chance during bow. I did get an eight point during bow, you know. There's nothing to nothing to scoff at, but he wasn't the one that I was looking for. And, uh, you know, there are some nice bucks around here, but this isn't Iowa or this isn't, you know, all those places that you got a ton of, ton of big bucks um, or a lot of deer to choose from. There's a bunch of deer here, don't get me wrong, but an eight point is, is pretty good. So it's not like you're hunting a place that not anybody else gets to hunt and you've got a bunch of fields so that may have been my my last chance but I'm not gonna give up so I wanted to show you one other thing on this bucks track before we head out of this area see you can see he's dragging his hoofs as he goes from one step to the next and he has pretty big track. Another thing that you can see, and people talk about it, they'll say, oh, buck has dew claws and the doe doesn't. That's not true, they both have them. But when you look in this track, you can see his hoof goes down in and he's got the dew claws in the back that are protruding a little bit farther than the doe. Here it is again, you can see the dew claws in the back and the track in the front and him dragging his hoofs as he goes from step to step to step. Those are some of the things that I look at when I'm looking at tracks. You know, he wasn't really super wide on his tracks. I mean, I'm not saying that was a 200 pound deer, you know, but it was, it was a big boy. How fresh, how, uh, how big are they dragging their toes? Do you see dew claws? Um, those are all things that go into is it a buck or not um not, i mean not the fresh part fresh part just i want to know if there's deer in my location right now it's 150 and i gotta admit i'm a little hungry and i'm getting tired i've been walking for quite a while i haven't seen a deer since i shot at that buck i've got three hours And it doesn't take that long to run into something and get a shot. So, I mean, it might take longer than that, but I'm saying it could be five minutes up the bank here. So I'm just going to cruise up this main road and cut in the pines and then work my way up. So I was working my way up the hill. One of the many hills I've been on today. And uh, I said, you know what? I kind of want to sit down just for a little while. Anyways, I came past a bunch of tracks in this one spot. There's just kind of an opening right here in the treetops. There's a bunch of tops down below and there's a bunch of tops where I'm sitting. But right here, right down here, there's an opening that goes up through. And there is a, it looks like five or six or more sets of tracks coming through here. And they're uh, using they're crossing the roadway right here too. So I thought, well, what the heck? Maybe I'll sit here for a little bit. It's like 2.50. I'm just kind of getting a breather, letting my muscles relax a little bit because they've been moving since we got here. Replaying that shot at that buck. I don't know how you hunters, other hunters do it if, uh, if you guys you know, think about how you could have done it different, how you could have done it better.
that one was a tough one. I, you know, I haven't. I've only taken my gun off safety during gun season twice. And uh, it's muzzle loader season, and that's the. That might be the first time I pulled back the hammer. I've only been out a couple times with muzzle loader. But I thought that was a done deal. A sure chip shot. You never get them back. I remember many of shots that I've missed that's like, uh oh, frustrated, or shots I didn't take. Anyway, sun's kind of shining, it's kind of nice. Just came out from the clouds. It's up there somewhere. Look at that. Just hoping to get another opportunity. That was the first, first shot that I've taken. And I did miss it, but... I mean, I sighted the thing in. I gotta stop yawning. Hmm. I sighted it in. I felt pretty confident. I I didn't pull. I slowly squeeze the trigger. I think the next time that something like that happens, I'm, hopefully it'll jog my memory and I'm just gonna wait. Wait till he stands up. That like I said, that snow is deep. You know, I could have could have aimed about an eight inches lower and maybe I would have probably would have hit him in the back and he wouldn't have got up. Anyways, we're gonna stop talking about it. <laughs> I think that's gotta be the biggest burl I've ever seen. It's enormous. Those trees. They've got to be at least 16 inches across. Look at that thing. It's got to be like 28 inches is my guess because it's way out past. That is cool. I can't imagine what the green in that looks like. Wow. five after five and I'm done for the day it was quite quite a day today uh, about ten hours well nine and a half hours of pretty much constant moving and I'm spent um, everything went great went as planned kind of what I was looking for anyways I was hoping catch up to a big buck and I did um, just, uh, the execution of the shot. That's the last thing. I apologize, everybody. I really was hoping to get one for you. I have a few days. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Some, I might come up for a couple hours tomorrow. We'll see. I don't think I'm going to see him again in that area for a little while. So, um, I don't know exactly what the hunt plan is, but I'm going to try to do my best. So, that's that. Um, you know, every year I learn something new. And uh, that was a big, big lesson to learn right there. There's no reason to take that shot. Anyways, should have waited for him to stand up, and I'm learning that. Um, so, that's it. Hopefully you still got, you guys still love me. I love y'all. Every one of you, thanks for watching. Uh, keep on watching if you would. Um, everybody's everybody's traveling. Uh, like, like, share, subscribe if you haven't yet, and leave a comment below. What do you think I should have done? Did I do everything I should have done? You got any words of wisdom? Any great comments? Be appreciated. So, that's it. December 18th is in the books. I will talk to y'all later. We love you. See ya.